Good morning, guys. War here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you the Sorcerer Firewall build. This dot damage, testing out everything that you guys need to see for dot damage and just seeing how well it goes. So in today's video, I'm going to show you everything from the skills, the gear, the Paragon board, as well as your Vampiric powers to make this build absolutely slap. Now, before we get into it, I do want to note a couple things. We're only doing a tier 57. Um, I can really get this thing about up to a 70 when it's all said and done around there. Firewall, by no means, is really going to be pushing the envelope when it comes to super high nightmare dungeons. There may be some videos out there that people have done higher ones. I'm not sure. I haven't really seen. But I just don't think that the dot damage is still strong enough to really capitalize on pushing high nightmare dungeons or at least like getting them done efficiently when it comes to your speed so they may be able to do it it's just going to take you a while because the dot damage still isn't as good as other builds especially when it comes to critically striking so i just wanted to get that out of the way for all of you when you're watching this video now let's go ahead and get into the skills the gear and everything that you need for the build so we're starting off with Firebolt. We're not using any basic in this build. When you're leveling up with Firewall, you definitely want to be using a basic. But we're using Firebolt, uh, mainly the two points just to get down to our core skills. But we're having that just so we can advance the board down. So we're going to come down. We're going to take Fireball into Greater Fireball. We're not using Fireball as a casting skill. We're using it in our enchantment slot. Because whenever we deal or kill an enemy, they explode uh, in a fireball for 50% of its damage, which is really, really strong. This just really helps us with AOE and large mobs, big density of monsters, which is really, really strong. We have one point into uh, potent warding. This is just really going to help us just cap our resistances. Um, if you don't need this, then you would just put the other point back into teleport and just max teleport. It's totally up to you. Then we got one point into devastation for our mana and three points into elemental dominance. So when we cast firewall above 50 uh, mana, we're going to get 9% increased damage. Next, defensive skills. We're taking all four again because what is a sorceress build without all of your defensive skills? So we're starting off with Flame Shield into Shimmering. This is just going to help us heal. The build is very, very squishy in a sense, but as long as you're keeping up all of your defenses, you should have no problems. If you're not having any health issues at all, then you can definitely 100% swap to Mystical Flame for the mana cost reduction. But in the end, I think just having an extra um, portion of healing is really good. Of course, we're maxing Teleport into Shimmering Teleport for the damage reduction. We're maxing all of our points into Glass Cannon for even more damage. We got Ice Armor into Enhance for mana regen. And then, of course, we're doing Frost Nova, which is one of the MVP skills of the build. Uh, into mystical to make them vulnerable <clears throat> for four seconds bosses for six seconds this is very good for the build we really really get a huge power boost when we're freezing enemies or mobilizing them in this build so frost nova is an mvp next we're maxing out precision magic to increase our lucky hit chance this build slightly does pull off of lucky hit for a few passives and skills but our lucky hit chance on firewall is 45 percent. so we're really hitting everything almost all you know every other time and with as much firewalls as you're creating and how how the dot damage works you really have a strong chance to really have lucky hit pop off next we're taking one point to align the elements for damage reduction and then we're maxing mana shield and protection for barrier as well as uh, just normal damage reduction. We're always going to have a barrier in this build because when we use a cooldown, which is every skill, all five out of our six skills, we will always have a barrier going, including the barrier that we make from ice armor. So having a barrier is very important in this build. Helps keep us alive and we're going to do some extra damage. Next, we're doing three points into Inner Flames, so that way our Pyromancy skills deal 9% more damage when we're healthy. We should try to be as healthy as we can all the time. And then we got three points into Crippling Flames. On a lucky hit, our Pyromancy skills have a chance to immobilize enemies. The chance is doubled when you are healthy. So as long as we're healthy, it's a 30% chance to immobilize enemies on a lucky hit. And <clears throat> our main skill of the build is Firewall which with a 45% lucky hit, we should have a very, very strong opportunity to mobilize everybody. But we're doing maxing firewall down into wizard's fireball. You gain 5% mana regen per active firewall up to 35%. This really just helps us allow us to be able to just spam constantly. Um, I did test with mage's firewall. 
Uh, the additional for them to burn outside really didn't matter for how many were actually casting and how much damage we're doing. I'd rather have the mana increase mana regen so I can consistently spam. Next, we're going to come down and grab one point in the Fiery Surge to give a small amount of mana regen, but we're doing it to get Endless Prior. You're going to deal increased burning damage to uh, enemies for each second they remain burning up to 15 times multiplicative. This is crazy strong. Then our ultimate, of course, is Inferno all the way maxed out into Supreme. The main reason for this is not only do we get a little bit of damage out of Inferno, but we're going to pull them all in, group them up so we can drop firewalls on them. But more importantly, Supreme allows us to have our Pyromancy skills cost no mana for the duration of Inferno. So while Inferno is going on, it's about 8 seconds, you can just 100% just spam firewall constantly. You just spam it, spam it, spam it. This works very, very well against bosses. Because single target damage really isn't the easiest for Firewall, but especially bosses. Elites we're actually pretty strong against, but bosses are a little bit tougher, but this really helps. And then, of course, our key passive is Combustion. Your burning effects deal 20% multiplicative damage and an additional 2% per unique source of burning you have applied to the enemy. Okay, uh, Isu's Ferocity is actually really good to help us do even more crit strike damage. Um, against enemies above 50%, my fire critical strike chances increase when against enemies that are below. Critical strikes that kill or hit bosses both with Esu's just procs it even more. I have found that combustion is just far superior. So we're rocking combustion. Now let's go into our gear slots here. <clears throat> into our gear, we're rocking God Slayer, okay? This is more of a high-end build. If you do not have God Slayers, you could just use a Helm of Disobedience and just max out cooldown armor and defenses. Uh, but we got God Slayer for even more damage against bosses and elites. That really helps us build out. Of course, we're rocking the best chess piece in the game, which is Remnants of the Infinite. This just allows us to just pull them in and just stun them, which is going to give us even more CC damage. If you don't have Remnants, then you can just use a basic chess piece. Uh, just go max defenses, and then you can put on something like um disobedience or you could do something like unwavering or you could do shared misery to increase the crowd control damage <clears throat> in our gloves we're doing edge masters because as much mana regen that we have not only from our fiery burn but then all of our defenses give us mana back with prodigies we actually get a lot of damage from edge masters which is really strong and then to bolts will in our pants every time we dash we become unstoppable and then we gain 50 percent of our resource back again or 50 of our primary resource back to keep us full even longer which helps edge masters and then we do all that increased damage it absolutely slaps if you do not have to bolts will again you could use regular pants just uh, get like max three in firewall and then all defenses <clears throat> and then again the same legendaries that i told you about shared misery uh disobedience something like that uh ghost walkers i really like this paired with uh metamorphose and just um dodging this allows us to be unstoppable and just have increased move speed if you don't want to use ghost walkers or something to give you more mobility then i suggest using like exploit or <clears throat> something like that to just really give you even more damage to crowd control uh, monsters but i prefer just the more speed and our weapon we're doing conceited while we have a barrier which is all the time we do increase damage then we got Storm Swell. While we have a barrier and the enemy is vulnerable, we do an increased damage. Again, we will always have a barrier nonstop. And then we have only a few ways to make them vulnerable, which is going to be Frost Nova as well as our Metamorphose Vampiric uh, power. But with that, we actually make pretty much everybody vulnerable. So this should be active all the time. In our Amulet, we're doing Control. We deal even more damage to CC'd enemies. We got Prodigies, which is just really going to help us mitigate our mana issues. And then, of course, the other MVP of the build is the X-Falls Corroded Signet. On the lucky hit, which our lucky hit is 45%, your damage over time effects, which would be our burning, have up to a 50% chance to erupt, dealing an insane amount of damage uh, to the same type, uh, damage of the same type to nearby enemies. All of our damage is fire. We're not doing really anything else. But we have a chance to really get this to pop off. There is times that you will see on a lucky hit or something with Frost Nova, um, proccing or even inferno sometimes it procs even though it's a low chance but this should mainly come from all of our firewall damage uh, so that is the gear guys very very strong very very high end you could definitely test with esus to give you even more chris strike chance even though chris strike really correct me if i'm wrong guys down in the chat or down in the comments but esus just 
the critical strike damage still doesn't affect dot as far as i understand in my testing so i it really really sucks i know that if it did it would make dot op but right now the just the speed bonuses um from this and the crit strike chance just really doesn't help this build a whole lot so let's get into our vampiric powers we are going to be rocking flowing veins this is the main one for our build we deal 60 percent multiplicative damage over time to enemies that are affected that are moving or affected by a vampiric curse so as long as they're affected by a vampiric curse which is going to come from metamorphose when we evade through our enemies we're going to apply some a little bit of damage but we're going to apply a vampiric curse so metamorphose is going to apply the curse which is going to trigger flowing veins and it's also going to be paired with prey on the weak because when we apply a curse, they become vulnerable, and then we deal the increased damage to all of the vulnerable enemies. So, so these three paired together is very, very strong. <clears throat> now you're probably asking, why am I not running a curse touch? There's just not enough pieces. If you wanted to drop Metamorphose, this would be the only one that I would drop to do a curse touch. But for me, I prefer the mobility and just dashing through and remaining unstoppable. So this... In my testing, I evade so many times because I have plus three evade on here from my boots, so I can evade four times. So we're we're basically able to make every enemy that we need to deal with vulnerable and have the curse no matter what. So those three required for the build. Next, we have Ravenous. This is just going to increase our attack speed to just drop walls. Because as you guys can tell, like it's, it's not very fast to drop a firewall in this game. It just doesn't happen. It takes a while because of the animation and then the animation for it to come up. So having the increased attack speed from Revenus is very, very good. Our current bonus is 60% increased attack speed when we actually get a lucky hit, which our lucky hits 45%. So this should be pretty active all the time. And then in our last one, we're doing anticipation. Now, this is a flex spot. Again, the first four you definitely need, but this is a flex spot. So this allows our ultimate skills, uh, which is Inferno, to have a 20% cooldown. Okay, this just allows us to cast this more, which means that we can have the no cost in mana to our fire skills, which means that we could spam firewall more often. However, if you feel like the damage that you're doing is fine and you really don't need all that, then you could drop anticipation. I would highly suggest doing something like domination. You could do something like undying to make sure that you stay healthy. Or you could do something like Sanguine Brace for even more fortify. And then you could also do resilience for even more damage reduction. Me, personally, I would probably do Undying or I would do Domination. Both of these are very, very strong. Undying would really help you make sure that all of your passive skills where you need to be healthy would just keep you full. This is nothing but an easy swap. Um, I was testing with this first. I 100% love Undying in this game. But I've been uh, testing with Anticipation just to see how many times I can spawn or not spawn. But cast Inferno to kind of just have an unlimited amount. Really, to me, I think anticipation is really, really strong. But in the end, when you're only pushing like 50s, maybe 60s as far as speed content, I don't think you need it. I would 100% do Undying. So last but not least, guys, let's go ahead and hop into the Paragon board. I'm not going to go ev over everything in depth. Everything is going to be down in the Mobilytics link down in the description below. Big shout out to them. Uh, but the glyphs that we're using is Control because everything is going to be CC'd. We're doing Adept, which is going to give us um, increased mastery skill because Firewall is a mastery skill. And we have increased area. We're doing Exploit for the increased damage to vulnerable enemies, which pretty much everything should be vulnerable. Then we're doing Destruction. The reason that we're doing Destruction, because I got to bring this board over here, is because of this node right here. A lot of people get a, a misunderstanding of how this works. So even though <clears throat> dot damage does not work as far as i know correct me again if i'm wrong in the comments guys dot damage is not affected by critical strike damage okay however this node says your burning damage is increased by 10 percent multiplicative of our critical strike damage bonus plus one percent of every 75 intelligence we have we have 789 intelligence which is very very good but our burning damage, which would be our firewall, casting firewall, is increased by 10% of our crit strike damage bonus. So that's why we're rocking destruction and we're getting as much crit strike damage as possible. Because even though we're not actually going to be triggering critical hits, our burning damage is going to have that multiplier of this crit strike damage. 
So it's 392% now of crit strike on this build. So we get 10% of this, which is a huge multiplier. And when we level up the glyph even more, it's going to be somewhere around 200% crit damage here. And then we're going to take 10% of that, which is just insane. Um, we have multiple nodes here where we're getting increased critical strike damage, but I wanted to explain that's how that, that works. So when you guys are looking at the guide, you can kind of understand how that works. So our current burning damage bonus is 38% multiplicative, which is insane. So the more crit damage that you have, especially on your gear pieces and in the board, the more damage that your burning is going to do just as a flat. Our last node is reinforced. This is going to give us more damage reduction while we have a barrier, and this is going to um, pump up some of our other nodes here, which we use in the very first board. So this gives us a lot of resistance and even more damage. So guys, that's the Paragon board. I really wanted to explain that. This is Firewall. I really enjoy this build. It does pretty well against like the dungeon bosses and just really good against the elites. I just cannot figure out a way to really push it higher than like 70 without being squishy. I think there's going to have to be some major changes in the build. Um, you would have to 100% add disobedience into the necklace and drop control down onto something. Uh, you might have to drop storm swell and put control in here and just sacrifice one um, or even drop edge masters and just drop something to have disobedience in here so you can survive. Um, but the build is very, very fun. I think Firewall is an amazing leveling build, and it's really good for pushing, you know, 50s or 60s and just speed content around the 50 mark. You actually have a blast, and then visually, the build is really cool visually. It just looks really, really good. So that's the build, guys. Like the video, comment down below, and as always, stay gaming. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.